All right, so let's take a look. Number one, a whale swims due east for a distance of 690 meters, turns around and goes west for 180 meters, and finally turns around again and heads 370 meters due east. What is the total distance traveled by the whale? And what is the displacement of the whale? Lost my pen, here we go. So number one, here, let's draw that. Number one, best thing to do is to draw it. So here's what we have. It goes east first. Then the whale turns around from that arrow and goes west. So it's 180 meters west. My blue arrow is shorter because it's a smaller distance. And then in green here, they're going to turn around again and go 370 east. So help me out in the chat. What do I do to these numbers to get distance? Your responses are not being recorded. All right. Very good. We add them up. Distance is really easy. Distance is always positive. Basically, when you're supposed to calculate distance, if I tell you to calculate distance, um, you're going to either add them up or use an equation. There's no equation we can use here, so we'll add those up. We'll get 1240 meters. That's our distance. So pretty easy. Displacement is a little more complicated, and in order to solve it, I'm going to use a definition here. Displacement, uh, the meaning of it, displacement is a straight line that points from initial position to final position. So we got to label that. We got to label that in our picture. Where is the initial position? Well, what did they do first? The whale started by going 690 meters east. So this is the first motion and they began here. So that's PO, initial position doesn't matter how much back and forward motion occurs here. It only matters that they ended there. So they went 690, then 180, and then 370. So here's PF. So to find displacement, we have to label initial position and final position. That means starting spot and final spot. And now we'll calculate it. I could do, here's what I think. I think I should do 690 plus 370, but that's only partially correct. Yes, we write this down. Please write this down. You can skip this part if you haven't written anything down yet, because that's already in your notes. Just the math. Uh, so should I just do 690 plus 370? There's one more thing I have to do. Those are correct so far, but there's something I need to do to get the distance from PO, like a straight line arrow from PO to PF. Oh, I sent that just to one person. Yeah, I almost said your name. You got it. We've got to subtract the 180. So it's kind of like, I mean, it's, these are called vectors. Um, this is a positive vector. This is a positive vector, and that's a negative vector. So if you add them all together, you get the total, and this one is negative because it's left. So displacement or delta P, you could write triangle P, is 370 plus 690 minus 180. The 180 is negative because it's left. Notice that in the first part, um, 180 is not negative. That's because distance is not a vector. 
distance is always positive. Whereas here we have two positive displacements and a negative displacement. So we'll get 880 metros east. I don't know how to say that in Spanish. You have to have the east. Displacement must include direction in the answer. And that's number one. If you've got questions, use the chat. Anything left is negative? Yes. But it has to be. So there's a question in the chat that says, anything left is negative? Um, if it's negative overall, so basically, let's look at the definition again. Displacement is a straight line that points from initial position to final position. So if I point from initial to final, my arrow is right, so it's positive. If I were to draw a picture like this, PO, and it goes back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, and there's PF, the arrow from PO to PF is left, so it's negative. So yeah, if the arrow that points from PO to PF is left, that's negative. Also the same case for down. Dose. Now the trick with dose, there's a little hint in it. Number two says, a runner travels 10 kilometers with a constant speed of 4.27 meters per second. How long does it take for the runner to complete the race? So constant speed is a hint. Constant speed means that you use the constant speed equation. This equation is for constant speed, and the four other equations on this test are for anything that's speeding up or slowing down. So this is for constant speed. There's also another problem um, they gave us D is 10 kilometers. Uh, no, they gave us S. S is 4.27 meters per second. Which of these do I need to convert? Very good. We got to convert distance. Um, the standard unit for distance is meters. So your conversion is at the bottom. We'll use this one. One kilometer is a thousand meters. So I'll put one there. Oh, I did that wrong. It's a thousand meters on top. One kilometer on bottom. So we'll have our distance is actually 10,000 meters. Now we can plug it in. And it's as simple as that. 4.27 equals 10,000 over T. Everything from this point on is algebra. We've done all the physics, so I expect you to be experts on the algebra. Um, if you don't know what to do after plugging the numbers in, I recommend coming into office hours so we can practice algebra together because you need to be an expert at algebra for the rest of the semester, the rest of the year. Um, to, cross, to solve for t, we cross multiply. Looks like it's 4.27t equals 10,000. We'll divide by 4.27 on both sides. And the time is two, three, four, two. So that algebra should be easy for you. If it's not, that's okay. We can just do a little bit extra work to catch up. I got your back, Jack. 
office hours are 2 p.m. every day. So that's that. We got two more. All right. Number three. Number three says, I'll focus that in a second. A car is traveling east at 25 meters per second at some instant. If its constant acceleration is 0.75 meters per second squared due east, find its velocity after 8.5 seconds have elapsed. So let's write what we know. Um, the easy one here is A. If you see meters per second squared, that number is A. The square, meters per second squared is A. It means that it's gaining 0.75 meters per second every second. They also gave me this number. I'm not sure what this 25 is yet, so I'm just going to write 25. I'm just going to write V. I don't know if it's VO or VF yet. Let's keep reading, though. Uh, find its velocity after 8.5 seconds. Well, I know that's got to be time. So what do we think? They also gave us find the velocity. I'm going to go back. Find the velocity after 8.5 seconds. So they're asking us to find one of the velocities. So what do you think? Are we trying to find the initial or are we trying to find the final? Based on this verbiage here, find the velocity after 8.5 seconds. Very good. Very good, y'all. Yeah, we're trying to find VF. By the process of elimination, that must mean that this is VO. So it's good to read the whole problem before you decide VO or VF. There's always two moments in time that these problems are talking about. On a little other side note, I knew to write these, like these are the big five variables. I knew that we were using these because of the acceleration. Um, that speed equals this equation from last, don't write this, this is not what we're going to use. This equation from the last problem, this is the speed equation. This is for constant speed. But since this thing is changing speed, I know we're going to use one of the other four equations. It looks like it'll be the easiest one. It'll be that one because we have stuff for all those four. They don't mention delta P at all. They don't mention displacement. They're not asking for displacement, so ain't no need. When you plug something into an equation, it's good to do parentheses. So now I know with the parentheses that these are being multiplied. And I could type that straight into my calculator all at once. I recommend that you don't use your uh, stock cell phone app. I don't recommend you use this thing, the stock cell phone app. I do recommend you use uh, Calculate84. That's a free app on your phone. Or what's even better is having buttons. Uh, and the answer to this, well, I don't know what actually, so it's 25 plus 0 0.750 times 8.50. So we need three sig figs or more, so you could do 31.4. I'm just going to write an extra sig fig for fun. Technically, I need a plus sign there. But I won't be grading on the plus signs. I only care if you forget the negative. This one's not negative because they don't say it's going west. They don't say it's going down. So we know it's going to be positive. And just one more for part one of the test. So here's number four. Number four. It says, a truck covers 40 meters while smoothly slowing down from 18.5 meters per second to a final velocity of 2.80 meters per second. 
find the acceleration of the truck. Yet again, it's accelerating. It's changing speed, so I'm not going to use the speed equals distance over time. That is for constant speed. We've got a truck that's changing speed, so we'll find the acceleration with the other equations. It says calculate acceleration or find the acceleration. 40 meters, well, since it says meters, I know that's displacement. They say it slows to a final velocity of 2.8. So that must mean that the other meters per second number is, a, is the initial. And they don't mention time at all, so we're not going to use it. Find the equation that has all four of those. It'll be this guy. So we'll plug them in. 2.80 squared equals 18.5 squared plus 2a40. So you only get half credit for getting this far. The next half is the algebra. So we want the algebra to be easy for us by the time we get to class on Tuesday. So if this doesn't seem easy to you, if solving for A seems challenging, come on down to office hours. I'm going to simplify by squaring this in my calculator, 7.84. I'll square the 18.5 as well. I'm going to do four sig figs, but you need a minimum of three. Uh, looks good. Now I can't add these. If this was 342.3, .3, A, if there was an A there, I could add them, but the A makes these unlike terms. So I would subtract this away. I want to get this away from the acceleration term. So I'll subtract on both sides. Uh, 7.84 minus 342.3. So on the left, I'll have negative 334.5 equals 80A. And then we'll divide by 80. Oh, no, we're good. Divide by 80. Hmm, I'm nervous about this. I didn't get that answer last hour. Might have done goof. Let's see. I'm getting four point. No, oh, looks good. Four point one eight. Uh, once again, I'm gonna go. I'm. I've been favoring four sig figs or more. Um, you can do three or more is the minimum though. That's the policy in this class. Three sig figs or more. So another correct answer would be negative four point one eight. But if you're anywhere near there, it's pretty good. Negative four point one five. Negative four point two zero. I'd probably accept anything around there. Um, the negative is important here. Now I'm just blabbing. I don't think I have anything else to say. If you've got questions, please ask them in the chat now. They might be good for the recording. And otherwise, I'll just shut it down. Oh, one little thing here. Ask, ask your questions if you got them. I'm going to explain one thing. This is pretty, this is commonly missed. Um, 2 times a times 40. You can multiply the 2 and the 40 because... Um, I forget what the property is called, but basically in math, the order of a multiplication doesn't matter. 2 times 40 times a is the same as 2 times a times 40 is the same as 40 times a times 2. It's the same as 4, 40 times 2 times a. So order doesn't matter. You'll still get the same number. I think we're golden then. I'll stop it here. Thanks, guys.